Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, profile time. Hey. At last. Yeah. Um, Luis Felipe Madeira Cairo Figo. Oh. Figo. That's right. Figaro, Figaro, Figo. <laughs> <laughs> Born 4th of November 1972. Jimbo. Peaked three years after the summer of love. <laughs> and what's he done, Luke? What's uh, he done? He's won the sperm race. Yep. Good. Yeah. Got there in the end. Yeah. Always fresh, this bit of the show. We didn't, we didn't plan that bit. It's no, it's really spontaneous. Yeah. Oh, Figo. A wonderful footballer. I think mm. you'll all agree. He yeah. started his career at Sporting Club de Portugal. Yeah. To you and I, Sporting Lisbon. Made his debut as a 16 year old in 1989. Oh, back in the day, eh? Mm. All those years ago. All back those... in the day of Sarkis Milan. Oh, mm. why are you mentioning them? What's the same, same year? There's nothing to do with this one. Well, it's of the era. It's it the scene. It okay. was 20 years after the summer of love. <laughs> <laughs> Figo had won the sperm race 16 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just setting the scene up in the. You're not! I'm painting a picture of the European football landscape at that time. You're being disruptive. Sorry. That's what you're doing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Stop sorry. painting that tension. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, had 146 appearances for Sporting and scored 16 goals. In 1995, however, this was when his uh, career really came to the forefront of European football. He, um, he moved to the mighty Barcelona. Interestingly enough, though... Uh, apparently he'd signed contracts with Juventus and Parma, though. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this result... Yeah, I'll fit it all in. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Yeah. I'll be fine. <laughs> yes. he, uh, and this resulted in an Italian two-year ban for Figo, which obviously is slightly it pointless. Seems like it's sort of a football equivalent of, like, Baldrick's cunning plan. I know what you're thinking. Most footballers play for one team. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can I earn three times the amount of money and win three times the amount of things? I've got a cunning plan. Yeah, yeah. Well, did work, I did it. Zidane still has a ban, doesn't he, from the World Cup final? He does. Yeah. 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 So how, how long was his ban for at Barca? No, well, it was a two-year ban from Italian football. Oh, OK, right. Um, but he eventually Both moved... Yeah, exactly. He was going to Barcelona anyway. Yeah. Mm. He eventually moved to Barcelona for £2.25 million, uh, under Johan Cruyff. He was a huge success there. He... Um, he won the UEFA Cup Winners Cup and successive uh, league titles. I mean, I can remember him playing for Barcelona, and he was his dribbling skills were just incredible. And he was he was a kind of an attacking midfielder, more sort of winger, I suppose. But you wouldn't. He wasn't a traditional winger. Yeah, no. that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. trying to say. Um, <laughs> but he fitted in superbly, and he could play him on the right or the left because he he could deliver a cross superbly. Yeah, but course. then if you play him on the left. He cut inside and just rolled for one across yeah. the keeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he scored. I mean, he's played 216 times for, for Barcelona and scored 41 goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a good return, you know, for um, a midfielder. Yeah, so he was a big fan's favourite there. Um, and as I say, he won uh, a couple of La, uh, La Liga's uh, Copa del Reyes and, and UEFA Cup Winners' Cup. And God bless the Cup Winners' Cup. While yeah, I'm there. rest in peace. <laughs> okay. R.I.P. That's right, yeah. But... In the year 2000, he did the unthinkable. He went to Real Madrid. He Marcus. made a hugely mm. controversial move um, from oh. Barca's bitter rivals to Real Madrid for a world record transfer fee, which was um, roughly about £37 million. Pounds. I'm really interested how negotiations take place yeah. between the clubs. It's, it's really fascinating to me. Because they're obviously big rivals. They, don't, they, they know they're doing something that is sort of almost deliberately controversial. Yeah. Especially from Barcelona's side. If Definitely. he's a fan's favourite as well. It's almost like a Robert De Niro talking to Al Pacino in Heat kind of yeah, thing. It really mm. is, yeah, Well, it's like it when is. Ronaldo came from Inter as well to Real Madrid. It, from Real Madrid, there does seem to be this kind of desire to really irk Barcelona with things like that. <laughs> yeah. But, but sort of, I know what you mean, but in a way, Barca have got to be complicit in it. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And maybe this not is, the Ronaldo right, case. This is why it's fascinating. Yeah. What must it have been like when they were sat negotiating around those tables, hating each other? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Yeah. And it is real hatred. Yeah. yeah. Real hatred. Yeah. Which would make no sense because it would mean royal hatred, no. but still. No, royal hatred human still me. works. I think. Royal hatred is the most angry of all the hatreds, James. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, right royal hatred is the most cockney of all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a right royal hatred, as Joe Rennett may say. But he. Um, yeah, and, and of course, Figo was one of the Galacticos, along with uh, the likes of Ronaldo, Zidane, and, and David Beckham. He didn't get a great reception when he went back to the new camp, did he, Mark? We'll come on no. to that. Come on to that. I remember that well. It, uh, for, for Madrid, he won uh, a couple of the Ligas, uh, won the Champions League. Uh, I mean, that was a fantastic side, wasn't it? Zidane, Figo, mm. Raul, Carlos, Raul, Raul yeah. and then later Beckham came into the side. I mean, yeah. yeah, you can argue that. I mean, they, 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 I mean, for all their faults, and obviously it eventually imploded, but it was great to great to see them all. It's, a, it's an iconic photo, isn't there, of them all in a wall, a free kick wall, and it's Raul 
Um, that's right. Figo, yeah. Zidane, yeah. Um, Roberta Carlos, and Beckham. Mm, that's yeah. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny. There was uh, there's a little. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's when you played too long on sensible soccer. Or, Very uh, similar to the Portsmouth side of 1992. <laughs> yeah. Massive similarities there. Mm. There was a, there was a little cartoon caption I think in one of the papers when Beckham moved there, and you had Beckham was there, and and um, like Ronaldo and and Figo and Zidane were all gathered around him, and they're all going, "So, what's Phil Neville like?" <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I had a lot of success with Real Madrid, but um, there was uh, the the time when he uh, came back to play Barcelona at the new Camp, where it all, all went off, really. Um, a heated reception from the Barcelona <laughs> faithful is putting it mildly. Uh, low, th- objects, bottles, lighters... Pig's heads? Uh, well, there was, and the, there was the famous pig's head that was thrown, um, which, and, and all this... How do you get a pig's head into a stadium? Well, Did they um, just, like, put it in a shirt? If you're cutting, no, 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 he's got a ticket. If you're nice cutting up pork... the pork <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Uh, that, you're not going to sell that for much, are you? You can't put that in a bap with a bit of apple Fam- sauce. So famously, you've got to play at the San Siro, there was a moped smuggling. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. They probably just drove it in and they didn't realise. Yeah, because they probably just drove it up the stadium over the top. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, um, there's interesting. Do you remember in Loudrop, Michael? Because they're all built into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> now, Michael Loudrop did the same thing, moved between them, and then oh, did, right, did, yeah. Yeah. at half time he got dragged off in tears. That and he said, it's the, said it's the worst day of his life. Yeah, oh, really? really? That's not nice, yeah, is it? Yeah. Yeah. No. That's not nice at all. Uh, what was funny though, you talk about the hatred, the, the the papers in Madrid and Barcelona's take on things during this match. Because um, I mean, it, look, the guy had bottles, coins, everything thrown at him. That's not good on no. any kind of I mean, level. He couldn't take any corners. I remember that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, before the before the game, a uh, uh, Barcelona newspaper tried to goad him, just saying. The, ran, ran with a mini headline saying, Take them, Lewis. <laughs> oh, really? <Yeah. laughs> In reference, because he always took the corners, you see. Yeah. Um, and, and apparently it took him two minutes to take one of the corners. Um, and after the after the game, Van Hal, the Louis Van Hal, the Barcelona coach, went mental saying, he was saying, Figo provoked the fans. He walked over to the corners to take them really, really slowly. And he and he, he was just deliberately playing with the fans. And Figo responded to that saying, oh, I was a bit surprised. He never said anything uh, when I did that when he was manager. And I've saved his arse on more than one occasion. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nice. don't mess with a big man. Can you remember a game? Um, I think it might have been when it was Beckham, actually, Madrid at the new Camp. And it was it was snowing. And he couldn't take any because the people were chucking snow. That's right, over yeah. And over yeah. Again. The, the, that, that was it. But um, the Madrid papers called this match a uh, dark. Derby of shame, and they referred to the new camp as the Bronx New, whereas the Barcelona paper said, uh, went with the headlines, Figo is a provoker. I love the Spanish press. Uh, but this all made Figo an even bigger hero at, um, at Real Madrid, and he was absolutely <laughs> loved there. And He played 237 games for Real Madrid and uh, scored 57 goals. And he and he was huge there. He really was. And uh, I can remember uh, when Beckham arrived at uh, Real Madrid, he said Figo made him very welcome. I think he was one of the first players he met. And because uh, Figo spoke very good English, and he just said, "Hi, David. How you doing? Welcome, welcome." Anyway, here's my number. Any problems? Give me a call. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, slick as you like. I've been through it all. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to get any worse for you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then uh, he left Madrid uh, in the summer of 2005 on a free transfer uh, after his contract was. Uh, well, he was. He was. He was not the player. He, he wasn't the player he used to be. And I think no, the move to Italy right. was a sensible one, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And for uh, Inter, he won the the, the Italian Cup. Uh, Serie A titles, you know, he he did well there again. You know, another person to benefit from the Calciopoli scandal. And yeah, yeah. Stuff. But I mean, yeah, that's right. Like, like well, 100, 105 appearances for Inter and, and, and nine goals, not as many goals, but still. And uh, he retired recently, and his last game was on the thirty first of May against uh, Atalanta at the at the San Siro. Move on to his international career. Um, and that was very unlucky, actually, not to win any honours. He um, well, he did on a junior level. He um, yeah, that side, that Portuguese side, that one. Well, he was a part amazing. of the, he was part of the what was dubbed the Portugal's golden generation yeah. with Figo mm. Gomes, uh, Rui Costa, Conceição, Fernando Coito, Vitor Baia, uh, Jorge Costa, Pinto, uh, yeah, Paulo Sousa, uh, and, and a number of other players. Well, they they missed out, didn't they? The, well, they they had won. Fun. They won the under sixteen European Championships and they won the under twenty World Championships. You know, so it was a real side that grew up together um, and was really gelling together. And um, they got to the semi finals of uh, Euro two thousand and the controversial penalty in the last minute mm-hmm. against France put them out. Um, and then 
In 2006 World Cup, they got to the semi-finals, and you know, Zidane put them out again with a penalty for France. And 2004, if we go back final. a couple of years, in the final, in the I mean, At could home. you imagine it? You'd offered mm. them you, in your home country yeah. final of the European Championships against Greece. Yeah. You yeah. fancy that? Oh yeah, you'd have it all day. Didn't yeah. have it. But I mean, especially as they were out for a kind of revenge from losing the opening game of the tournament. Well, that's right. Greece uh, yeah, as well. people forget Greece because they were twice. really riled by that. Yeah, G- Greece tactically were absolutely superb. In that yeah. Oh, it was a really, really strange one. But mm. it was, I mean, yeah, you'd obviously back Portugal at home, and they, and that, and in, in, in a lot of ways, realistically, that was the last chance for that golden generation to win anything. Yeah, yeah so, so you so, think? Yeah. It, I mean, football often works like that poetically. It was always going to happen, but again, it didn't. So, well, he announced his retirement after that 2004 final, but then um, reversed that decision and came back for the qualifier in 2006 and was involved there. But um, individual honours, he won FIFA World Player of the Year in 2001, Ballon d'Or in 2000 as well. So, I mean, a, a club was level. He the most expensive player at one stage as well, wasn't he? Well, I yeah, said I that when he was. went to oh, yeah. Real Madrid, 37 million. So he won all the individual honours. Pretty won, pretty much won it all at club level. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it was just the international that just um, eluded him. Just eluded him. But uh, he said that um, he's leaving Inter, but he wants to work for Inter in the future, and uh, so he wants to stay in football. So as you said last time, I think, look, it is great when genuinely class players stay in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I really do think, you know, for the last 15, 20 years of football, I think he's been one of the best players in the world. I don't think there's any doubt about that. To mm. I, th- I really, do, I really think he player. is. I mean, he's up there with with Brazilian Ronaldo and Zidane. Yeah, he's me, magnificent. In the last sort of fifteen twenty, and they all play on the same <laughs> side. He's one of those players. He's, he's, he's not exactly he's like blessed with eight, you know, sort of loads of pace, but he, he's like he got never needed to be. And I had the ball on the string, sort of thing. Same yeah. as sort of Raquel Mendes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He had that sort of glide to him. Yes, yes. yes. similar to how Zidane had, and both of them in that side was devastating. At he's, times. A, well, he's a very strong player as well. Yeah, could, yeah. could hit a dead ball as well. Oh, and no, and, no. and, and, and it's Do you remember the goal he scored against England? Oh yeah, absolute scream! Yeah. Right, yeah, I think it took a slight deflection, but I don't want to take it away because it was a great goal. Yeah, um, but uh, it's worth saying that he had 127 appearances for Portugal and scored 32 goals. Um, he Need also that. uh, that's right. So he, he has retired, but he's hopefully going to. Well, he says he's going to stay in the game. He now also owns um, an upscale bar in the Algarve region of Portugal. Hmm. So a field trip there, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> present him. For, yeah, present him with his um, DWHOF sort of. What it, sort of metaphorical trophy and it's <laughs> actually it's, that's actually a bronze bust of Dean Windass's face if yeah. anyone's worried, uh, yeah. wondering about that which um, we yeah. send off to each player that's inducted yeah. absolutely and I'll, I'll end traditionally with a quote and this is from Carlos Quiroz uh, Alex Ferguson's nephew um, <laughs> <laughs> he said uh, he said of the 11 year old Figo he said even then Luis was ahead of the rest come on in Luis Figo welcome <laughs> Dean Windass all the fame lovely welcome. Absolutely. Obrigado. <laughs> what they say in Portugal. That means thank you. It does. Obrigado. Thank you.